you can know right now. If you're like, hey, I don't know where I would go if I died right now. If you don't know if you would go to heaven, there's a simple way. There's an easy way to know if you're going to go to heaven. The Bible says those who have the Spirit of God are sons of God. Those who do not have the Holy Spirit are not children of God and they will not go to heaven. The way to receive the Holy Spirit in your life is to call out to Jesus. To say, Jesus, I give my life to you. I believe that you died on the cross for my sin. I admit that I'm a sinner. I know what I have done is wrong. And I'm asking you to forgive me. I believe that God brought you back to life. And the Bible says all those, anyone, whosoever calls on the name of Jesus will be saved. The Bible says those who believe in Jesus have passed out of judgment. But those who have not believed in the Son of God have already been judged because they have not believed in the only Son of God. Guys, Jesus didn't come into the world to condemn you. Jesus came to set us free because we were already condemned. The Bible in Romans says everyone has sinned. We have all fallen short of God's right standing, of his glorious standard. God's standard is be holy for I am holy. If you've done one bad thing, then you are not holy anymore. But it goes deeper than that. Man was separated from God at the very beginning when Adam decided to do, take the forbidden fruit of, no, of, the, of the knowledge of good and evil. So we were all born knowing right from wrong. So we all chose our own path. We left God's path to follow our own path. God's country is holiness. We stepped out of his country the moment we sinned. The penalty of sin, come on, Charlie, is death. It's separation from God. That broke God's heart. God didn't want to be separated from you. So God had an idea, a secret rescue plan. Jesus and the Father have a secret rescue plan. They said the plan was this, that Jesus would come in a human body. That means God had a human body because Jesus is fully God. Jesus was fully man. So therefore he could take the sins that we had committed on himself because he is in our flesh. He is made in our likeness. He's made in the image of man. He knows your weakness. He knows your struggles because he was weak and he struggled with it all but he never sinned he was perfect that's why we call him the perfect spotless lamb of god jesus was the sacrifice for our sin he was our substitute instead of us having to pay for our sin jesus paid the price for our sin but it is a gift you have to accept what jesus did for you personally Salvation happens when you accept what Jesus Christ did for you at the cross, not just for everybody else. It's not enough to know about Jesus. You have to make a decision. You have to decide. Guys, there's only two kingdoms in this world. You have God's kingdom and the kingdom of darkness. You serve yourself. <laughs> you serve money. You serve uh, wh pleasure, whatever feels good. You're serving the kingdom of darkness. Guys, quit trying to build your own kingdom because it does not lead to eternal life. Eternal life is only found in the kingdom of Jesus. Jesus said, I've come to give you life and life to the fullness. Jesus said, he who believes in me will live even if he dies. And he who lives in me will never die. He is telling you twice. His promise is twice. If you trust in Jesus Christ, 
for the forgiveness of sins, you will live forever. We live in a broken body in this world because of sin. We're in a sin-ravaged world. We live in a dark world. We live in the kingdom of darkness. This, is, this world is run by the enemy. But you can be transferred from it. In Colossians chapter 1, verse 13, it says, God has rescued you from the kingdom of darkness and transferred you into the kingdom of his dear son, Jesus, who purchased your freedom with his blood and forgave your sins. Guys, you don't have to live in darkness. Jesus said, I came that you could be in light. You don't have to be in the darkness anymore. If you're hurting, if you're alone, if you're tired, you don't know what to do with your life and you feel like giving up, call out to Jesus. Jesus loves you. Jesus likes you. He has a plan for your life. He has not given up on you. In Jeremiah 29, 11, it says, God says, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not harm you. Plans to give you a future and a hope. Guys, uh, there's another Bible verse that I love. It says, no one who puts their trust in the Lord will ever be disappointed. They will never regret it. There's never been one person who trusted in the Lord God Almighty and came back disappointed. He is the giver of life. Our Heavenly Father, God the Father, is the creator of all things through His Son, Jesus. It just says, in Jesus are all things and all things exist through Him because He created them. Our Father loves you how do I know that God the Father loves you? It's through his message, through his love letter, through his son Jesus. When you see the cross, you see how much God loves you. God didn't want to be separated from you. God made a way for you to be with him through sending his son Jesus. When Jesus died on the cross, he became sin. The Bible said he who knew no sin became sin, that we might be in right standing with God. At the end of Colossians uh, chapter 1, verse 22, it says, Through the death of his son, Jesus, he presents you holy, blameless, and irreproachable as you stand before God without a single fault. My friends, there is a way to stand before God without a single fault. That is through accepting what Jesus did. It's through following him. Guys, quit following your own desires and follow Jesus. It's time to follow Jesus. Quit following after the lust of the flesh, saying, I want more, I want more. Gimme, 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 gimme. Guys, selfish, selfishness, greed, anger, hatred, drug addictions, guy, pornography, it all leads to death. Guys, a good job, it won't save you. It just preserves your life. I'm not here to, to make sure you have a happy life. I'm here to make sure you get eternal life. Eternal life is through trusting in Jesus. This world is temporary. I tell people all the time, this life is like a bus stop. You are waiting for the bus that goes to eternity. Which bus are you going to be on? The one that goes to heaven or the one that goes to hell? Because when you reject God, God says, fine, then you will have your own life and you will be on your own. You do not have eternal life in you if you do not have the spirit of Christ. That is separation from God and that will lead you to hell. Salvation is when you accept Christ Jesus as your Lord and you choose to follow him. What did Jesus say to the rich young ruler in the Bible? This rich guy walks up to him. He's like, I keep the Ten Commandments. I'm good, right? And Jesus said, you're good except for this. I need you to sell all your possessions and follow me. And it says, the rich young ruler hung his head and cried and walked off because he wasn't willing to give what he had to the king. Jesus isn't asking for your money. He doesn't need your money. Jesus wants your heart. That ruler had made his money and his life his kingdom. 
He had not decided to follow Jesus. He wanted to follow after what gave him pleasure. So Jesus spoke to his idol. Some, somebody right now watching, Jesus is speaking to your idol. He's saying, hey, if you trust me, let this go, and I will give you eternal life. Guys, eternal life is through trusting in Jesus. It's like sitting in a chair. It's like you have to trust the chair that it's going to hold you, and you just sit down. Some of you need to trust Jesus. Just sit down. Trust him. Say, I give up, Jesus. Would you come into my life? Would you forgive my sins? Would you be my Lord? Quit trying to do it on your own, guys. Quit trying to do it on your own. It's time to simply trust and obey. I love that song. It says, trust and obey, for there is no other way to simply trust and obey in Jesus. We trust him. We obey him. If you, would, if you have done that, if you said, hey, I would like Jesus to come into my life right now. Do we have anybody watching, Charlie? If you have never given your life to Christ, would you pray with me right now? Here we go. Come here, Charlie. Let me, let me lift the camera. If you've never given your life to Christ, I want you to pray with me right now. Repeat this prayer with me. And it's not about the repeating. That's not magic. What's magic is your heart declaring to God that you believe in Jesus and you want him to come into your life and forgive your sins. And then you're making a proclamation that you've decided to follow him, to go into his kingdom, and to stop serving your own. So let's do this. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe in you. I want you to be the Lord of my life. I ask that you would come into my life and forgive my sins. I'm so sorry for hurting you, Jesus. Say, Father God, I believe that you brought Jesus back from the dead. And that all those who believe in Jesus are saved and forgiven. So right now I declare out loud, Jesus, I believe in you. And I ask that you would come into my heart. You would forgive my sins and you would make me new. Now I want you to pray this prayer. Say, Holy Spirit. I invite you into my life in the name of Jesus. Would you help me to follow Jesus? Would you help me to serve God's kingdom? I love you, and I give you full authority, Holy Spirit, in my life. Come and take over. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Jesus will answer that prayer. He will not leave you. He loves you. Guys, I challenge you. Pray that prayer. Ask Christ into your life. He will change you. He will make all things new. I love you. Thank you, Jesus. The Bible says, I've hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. Who do you think you're hiding in your heart? Who is hiding in your heart? Is it Jesus or is it sin? Are you hiding the word of God in your heart? Or are you hiding anger and unforgiveness and bitterness? Guys, it's time to forgive. Right now, I think I'm talking and I think there's people watching that <laughs> they're angry and bitter towards somebody. In Colossians chapter 3, the Bible's very clear. It says you must make allowances for other people's faults. Remember, Christ forgave you, so you must forgive others. Guys, it's not a good idea. It's a commandment from the Bible that you release and forgive. The Bible says, forgive and you shall be forgiven. For unforgiveness, is like drinking a bottle of poison and then hoping somebody else dies. Unforgiveness gives a mighty foothold to Satan. 
Guys, you don't want any open doors from the devil in your life. Sin is an open door. Unforgiveness is a sin. Pornography is a sin. Lying is a sin. Cheating is a sin. Nast being nasty, just being ungrateful and, uh, and, and selfish is a sin. We're not perfect. We all sin. That's why Christ came and died for us. But if we're truly following him, then we got to lay those things down because you're not merely human anymore. You have the spirit of Christ Jesus in you. Guys, it's not how worldly can I be? Can I ride the fence and play with the world and have Jesus? No, there's, there's only two kingdoms. You don't get to ride the fence. In Revelations, God says, I want you either hot or cold. But if you're lukewarm, I will spit you out. This is not a game. This is about your life. This is about worship. Who do you worship? You're either going to worship yourself and your desires or you're going to worship the king of kings, which is Jesus the Christ, the forgiver of sins. I think there's people watching right now that don't think they can be forgiven. That's silly. Jesus came to forgive sins. It's his favorite thing to do. Jesus' favorite thing to do is to forgive. Take him up on it. Try it. Say, Jesus, would you forgive me? Jesus, I've done bad things in my life, and I, they're chasing me. I don't know how to get free from it. I claim your blood, the blood that was shed on the cross of Calvary over my life. Would you forgive me? Would you help me? Would you make me new? Would you make me clean? Call out to Jesus. He will make you clean. He desperately loves you. Jesus desperately loves you. But you have a decision. If you saw a guy drowning in the ocean and you had a boat and you reached out your hand to him, but he wouldn't take your hand, he won't be saved, right? He's going to drown. A lot of you are drowning, but Jesus has his hand out. He says, trust me. You've tried to do it on your own for so long, and it just hasn't worked. Take his hand today. Take the hand of Jesus. You will not be sorry. You will not regret it. Because you know what happens when you take Jesus' hand? Do you know what happens when you accept Jesus as your Lord? You get adopted by God. You're given a beautiful family. A beautiful family. You'll never be alone again. You'll have the spirit of Yahweh, the spirit of Yeshua, Jesus, the Christ, living in you. You're brought into God's family. You become a prince or a princess in the kingdom of heaven. That's what God wants for you. God's not here to control you. He's here to dote on you. He's here to love on you. But it's only his way. There is no my way. It's God's way. And God's way is through following his son, Jesus. Make a decision today. The Bible says, choose this day who you will serve. I love that word serve because that's what it is. You're either going to serve yourself or you're going to serve Jesus. And serving yourself leads to death. But serving Jesus leads to eternal life. And it's the best feeling in the world. Jesus set me free when I was 22. I'm 44 now. <laughs> I'm 44 now. I've been following Jesus for a long time. adopt you through his Holy Spirit the Holy Spirit he's the kindest strongest spirit he loves you 
Let him chase away the demons that are plaguing you. The Holy Spirit's not scared of the devil. The Holy Spirit is not scared of demons. You might be. Some of you have made contracts with Satan. Some of you have made deals with the devil and you're afraid. What happens? What happens if I do say yes to Jesus? Let me tell you what happens. Jesus' life was forfeit to break every covenant with hell. Every contract that you have signed with the enemy can be broken through trusting in Jesus and the work of the cross. Come to the cross. Come to Jesus. Say, Jesus, I've made deals with the enemy and I don't want it anymore. Would you set me free from hell? Guys, some of you that are stuck in sin and you don't know what to do, say, Jesus, I messed up. I've really messed up. I don't, I don't even know if I want to be free. I need help. Would you deliver me from this evil demonic thing that I've given myself to? I call out to Jesus. Holy Spirit, you're the strong spirit of God. You're the spirit that raised Jesus from the dead. Would you raise me out of my sin? Would you set me free? Hallelujah. Jesus loves you. Where are we at, Char Char? Uh, 382. What's up, 382 people? Smash that like button. Smash the follow button. Help me share Jesus. Today we're talking about how to go to heaven. It's through trusting in Jesus for the forgiveness of our sins. Jesus Christ came in the flesh. He's a real human being, fully God, fully man, and ready to make you whole and clean. Trust him. All right, all right, all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jesus, you're our king. What's up? That's where we're at right now? Uh, no, we're at 435 right now. Hey, guys. Tap the screen. Double tap the screen. Let's see how many people we can get on. The highest I've ever had was 10,000 people on at one time. Isn't that crazy? God's good, right? I just held up a simple sign that says, Jesus loves you. And I had 10,000 people on. It's because people need to know their love. Help me share this message. Help me share the message of the good news of that God has come. He gave us his son, Jesus. Jesus is alive. He died on the cross for our sins, and God brought him back to life. In Revelations 1.18, Jesus is standing in heaven, and he says, Behold, I am the living one. I was dead, and now I'm alive, and I hold the keys of death and hell. In that statement, he's saying he's alive and he has the keys to set you free. It doesn't matter what death you're facing. It doesn't matter what hell you're in. Call out to Jesus and he will unlock it and set you free. He set me free from drug addiction and steroids and sleeping around and wild partying and demons, guys. I couldn't sleep at night without demons attacking me, choking me, biting me, pulling me out of my bed. Jesus is real and he can set you free. It's not just that he can, he wants to set you free. He loves you, it's his delight. You are God's delight. You're his absolute favorite thought. He loves you. That's why I do what I do. I don't care if this cross isn't real. I just walk around to remind people of what Jesus has done. I've been doing it for almost 15 years. Jesus saves. I love in Psalms, it says, I will say hallelujah all day. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I'm set free because Jesus is Lord. How you doing? God loves you. Jesus is good. In Psalms, it says, I will shout out in, in Psalms 40, God is great. God is great. God is great. Because he wants to adopt you and become your father. That happens through trusting in Jesus. Guys, you're not going to be perfect. No one's perfect. 
The Bible says don't sin, but when you do sin, know that Jesus is at the right hand of the Father making intercession for us. The Bible also says, this is beautiful, the Bible also says, sorry, my mind just went blank. <laughs> the car was honking and I was like, wait, what? Where was I at, Charlie? What was I saying? Jesus is good. He was talking about, in, I was in John chapter 3, I mean, uh, John, 1 John or 2 John, about sins being forgiven, that Jesus is sitting at the right hand of the Father making intercession for us. And making intercession means praying, praying. the Holy Spirit, it says, he's praying with you with such passion. Someone got the screen, guys, let's live the dream. Help me share the name of Jesus all over social media. Snap that follow button. All right, here we go. Yeah, guys, my name's Eric, if y'all don't know who I am. If you haven't followed me yet, would y'all follow? Help me to share the name of Jesus all over social media. That's my goal, is to carry the cross across web pages. To carry the cross all over social media. When people are scrolling, they would see the cross and they'd hear the message of Jesus. That he came and he made a way for us to be with God. You can be in a family today if you've never given your life to Christ. You're adopted by God's spirit. It says that God places his love. He pours out his love in our hearts by giving us the Holy Spirit. Do you know who the Holy Spirit is? He's the spirit that drove Jesus to the cross. How do I know that in Isaiah, Jesus prophesied. He said, I set, uh, Isaiah prophesied about, the, about Jesus coming, saying, I set my face like Flint determined to do the will of God. What was the will of God? Was that you be forgiven of your sins. The Holy Spirit was in Jesus, driving Jesus to the cross, saying, I love you. I love you. I love you. It said in the Bible, it was the joy set before him. He endured the cross. What is the joy? You are his joy. The Holy Spirit loves you. You are everything to, to the Holy Spirit. Did you know the Holy Spirit is jealous for you. The Holy Spirit loves you so much. He drove Jesus to the cross. He's like, I gotta have my kids. I gotta have them. I gotta have them. Holy Spirit is the kindest person you'll ever meet. I say person because he's real. You can have a relationship with the great spirit of God. You can have a relationship with Jesus. You can talk to your father God in heaven through accepting Jesus and what he did for you at the cross. Guys, play time's over. You've served yourself for so long, it's time to serve him. If you would like to be filled with the Holy Spirit, open your hands with me right now. I'm just gonna pray. Holy Spirit, on, the, on this live feed and on this street, we invite you in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, we in, invite you to fill us. Say, I invite you, Holy Spirit, into me. Pray this prayer with me. Say, Lord Jesus, I'm asking for your Holy Spirit to come into me. Be the strong spirit in me, God. Say, pray this with me. Say, in the name of Jesus, Holy Spirit, I invite you to come into my life and to bind every demonic spirit that I have let into my life. I pray you would clean me. I pray you would help me to walk free. I pray you would set my face like flint, determined to do the will of the Father. And what's the will of the Father for you? It's to love Jesus and to love your neighbor. The will of the Father is that you be loved on, 
that you be loved on, that you be adopted, that you're given a family. Jesus is king and he's awesome. He's not just a story. I don't care what people are posting on Facebook or TikTok or Instagram. Jesus changed my life. He set me free. I know Jesus is real. I've seen him heal people. There's a lot of different religions in this world, but there's only one empty grave. Only one. Only one has returned from the grave, and his name is Jesus. And he's more alive today than he ever was. <coughs> Let Jesus carry you today. If you're having a hard time and you don't know what to do, if you're having a hard time with your kids, you're having a hard time with your relationships, if you're having a hard time with money, I want you to place that burden on Jesus' shoulder. I want you to close your eyes and say, Jesus, I give these financial problems to you. I give this relational problem to you. If it's a mental disorder, I give it to you. There is nothing that Jesus can't handle. I want you to close your eyes and picture holding Jesus' hand. That's your go-to. When you're having a hard time, just close your eyes and hold Jesus' hand. Say, Jesus, I don't know.